Welcome to the Structure Studios online video series. This video will explain Stage 11, Plants and Items. In this stage, you'll add plants and trees to landscape your project and complete your design with lighting, outdoor kitchen equipment, furniture, rock work, and more. We'll first add plants in the planter along the rear fence. The library is open to the Plants and Trees tab. Click the arrow next to Trees to view all the subcategories. Click Evergreen to add a check mark to expand this type. We can scroll through the thumbnail previews or the list view of the options. Click Copper Tone Loquat to select it. Click Insert Multiple to place multiple plants without going back to the library. When we move our mouse, the tree is attached to our cursor. Move the plant to the left corner of the planner and click to place it. Move your mouse to the right and click to place the second plant. Continue until you have five trees along the back planner. Once the last tree is placed, right-click to stop inserting and remove the plant from your cursor. Each plant we place looks slightly different than the last. This gives a natural and realistic look to the landscaping. With a plant selected, click the New Variation button in the panel to view the different variations. The object menu at the top of the screen tells us the category, type, and name of the selected plant. Click Show in Library to have the library open right to the plant. To quickly access this tree in the future, click the star in the top right corner of the thumbnail. The star turns yellow and the plant's added to your favorites list. If you change your mind, click the star again to remove it. When we press the matching button in the panel, the program automatically selects all the trees we've placed. With all five plants selected, we can make sure they're evenly spaced with the Distribute buttons under a line. Click Distribute Vertical and then click Horizontal. Now we want to add shrubs between the trees. We can browse the library again or use the Search feature. Click the search bar at the top of the library next to the magnifying glass. Type High Bush Blueberry and press Enter. The results appear below. Click the shrub to select it and then click Insert Multiple. We'll add the shrubs between the trees. Once the last shrub is in place, right click to remove the plant from your cursor. Let's head to 2D to see how our plants look on the 2D grid. Landscaping can be shown as 2D symbols or 3D colored markers. In the panel, Show as Symbol allows you to toggle from 2D Symbol to 3D Marker for the selected plant. We'll leave our plants as 2D Symbols. When Lock Symbol is active, the 2D plant symbols will remain a consistent size. You can scale the plant in 3D, but the 2D Symbol will remain a set size for your construction plans. Unlock the symbol to change the 2D Symbol size. Below this is New Variation. Click this button to see different variations of the plant. Next is the Container Class Slider. As we adjust the slider, the 2D symbol updates to reflect the new container size. Later in the video, we'll review how to adjust the symbol for each container class. We can also add a callout to our plant. Click Callout under Labels and Guides. When we move our mouse onto the 2D grid, the plant name with an arrow pointing to the plant is on our cursor. When we have it in the correct position, left-click to place it. Once placed, additional options appear in the panel. Add another callout arrow, display the common or botanical name, and add an image. Double-click the placeholder to open the Edit Object window. Click Browse PC to select an image of the plant on your computer. Click Online Search to find an image online. Once you find the image, drag and drop the image from your browser into the software. Once the image is in place, press OK to link this photo to your plant. To review additional settings, press F7 to open the configuration menu and click the Library tab. Here we see a number of options for the library and objects. Plant names lets you choose to display common or botanical names in your library. Click Set Plant Zones to open the zone map. First select a region to display the map. By default, 
all zones are turned on. Add a red X in the zone list to remove a zone. You can also click the map to add or remove zones. Only plants that grow in the selected planting zones will appear in your library. Once your library zones are set, press OK to close the zone map. Next, press OK to close the configuration window. By default, plants in the same category share the same symbol. We can assign a custom symbol to each plant or tree. Open the library and head to the Currently Used tab. Click the Copper Tone Loquat thumbnail. On the 2D grid, all the Copper Tone Loquats are highlighted in green. To assign a custom symbol, click the gear on the thumbnail. The Edit window displays the 3D model of the plant, the assigned 2D symbol, and the callout image we set. To assign a new symbol, click the 2D symbol to select a new symbol from the list. The list below displays any plant the symbol is already assigned to. Each container class can also have a unique symbol assigned to it. We can also set the fill and line style for each symbol. Choose between basic or artistic fills and set the color. On the line tab, set a solid or dashed line, thickness, and color. As we make changes, the 2D symbol preview image updates automatically. Once your changes are set, press OK to close the edit window. Now we'll place furniture on our wood deck. Click the Items tab. Click the arrow next to the furniture to view the options. Click Adirondack Set to add a check mark and expand this type. Select the Lounge Set. Double click the image to add this set to our design. The furniture will follow your cursor. When Auto Elevation is on, the item will automatically adjust to the height of the shape it's placed on top of. Move this set on top of the wood deck and click to place it. The set is facing the wrong direction. Hold down the left mouse button and with the blue arrow on the gizmo, rotate the set 90 degrees. Once rotated, use the red arrow to move the set back against the house. If you only need some of the items in the set, simply press the ungroup button in the panel. Once the template is ungrouped, items can be selected individually. Double-click the ottoman. Press Delete to remove it. Now double-click the second ottoman. We can use Replace at the bottom of the library to select a different item. Click the side table thumbnail and press Replace. The ottoman is replaced with the side table at the exact location and elevation. Let's undo our changes with the Undo button at the top of the screen. Press Undo until your seating group is back to the original set and highlight it in red. Now we'll make changes to the furniture, but keep it as a set with Group Edit Mode. Double click the group to enter Group Edit Mode. When the mode is active, a green box surrounds the group and the rest of the screen is faded. Now we can edit individual items as if they're no longer grouped. Double click the chair to select it. Then hold down the control button to select the ottoman. With both selected, move them to the right to create more space in the set. Now double click the side table to center it. When we're done editing the group, press escape to exit the mode. Next we'll add a grill to the outdoor kitchen. To make it easier to see the options, we'll reset the library. Click the clear button next to the items to clear the thumbnails. Click Furniture to minimize the category. Then click the arrow next to the Outdoor Kitchens to view the options. Click Grills to add a check mark and expand this type. Select the 40-inch Gourmet and double-click to add it. The grill will follow our cursor. When the line snap is active, the grill will automatically snap and rotate to the sides of the Outdoor Kitchen. Once the grill is in the right spot, click to place it. We use this same technique to add access doors and drawers. Now we'll place a sink in the hole we created with the Carve Tool. Click Equipment to expand the list. Double-click Sink to add the sink to your cursor. Position the sink next to the hole and click to place it. With Auto Elevation on, the sink goes on top of the counter. If we place the sink over the hole, when Auto Elevation is on, the sink will go to the bottom of the hole. 
So we'll turn off auto elevation, set the elevation to three feet, and move our sink into position. The sink is facing the wrong direction. To adjust it, hold down the left mouse button and use the blue arrow on the gizmo, or type negative 90 degrees on the gizmo. Next, we'll add fire to our fire pit. Let's clear our library, then click the arrow next to fire elements to view the options, and click fire animated to expand this type. Double click gas to insert it. Position the fire over the center of the fire pit and click to place it. With auto elevation on, the fire will appear on top of the fire pit. Now we want to add scuppers to the raised beam. Let's head to 2D to add them. Close the fire elements category and click water elements. Click scuppers to add a check mark and see the options. Double click sheet flow 36 inch to insert it. From the left side of the pool, count five grid spaces and click to place the first scupper. Hold down the left mouse button to use the arrows to rotate the scupper. Now turn off auto elevation and set the elevation to one foot three inches. To add the second and third scuppers, hold down shift and drag your mouse to the right. Once the scuppers are in place, we'll select them to set the spacing. Hold down control and click each scupper to select it. When an item is selected, it will highlight in white. Now press Distribute Horizontal to evenly space them. The arrow attached to the scupper represents water flow. The water is flowing from the wall into the pool. To adjust the settings of the water feature, double click the scupper. In the panel, we can adjust the length, distance, pressure, and taper. Now we'll add lights to our pool and spa. Click the search bar at the top of the library and type pool light and press enter. Select six inch animated. Turn on auto elevation and press insert multiple. The light will follow our cursor and automatically snap to the pool walls and steps. Position the light on the step in front of the tanning ledge and click to place it. Position the second light on the wraparound bench in the spa and click to place it. Position the third light centered on the 15-foot pool wall and click to place it. Next, we'll add landscape lighting to our planner. Type landscape light in the search bar and press enter. Select dome. Press insert multiple. Place four lights along the planner. Once the last light is in place, right click to remove the light from your cursor. Press the matching button in the panel. With all four lights selected, click Distribute Horizontal. Then click Alignment Bottom to set an even distance from the planner curb. Let's head back to 3D to see our scuppers and lights. The scuppers look great. Press N on the keyboard to see the project at dusk. Press N again to see the project at night. The lights turn on automatically and the pool lights animate under the water. Using these techniques, we'll finish adding plants and items to our project. Later, in the construction phase, our plans and legends will automatically fill with the plants and items set here. This completes instruction on plants and items. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit structurestudios.com/help.